All right, now that we've gotten into the basic settings of a Chromebook, let's take a little bit further look into what you can uh, do with the Chromebook, where some of your feature settings are. Again, you'll notice that there is nothing on our screen, and there's really not anywhere to tell you where to go, what to do, and how to do it. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is basically showing you what to do and what, where to go. If you're used to using a Mac, you're used to seeing a, um, your icons across the top, your file, your edit, your, your different features, your little Apple icons so that you can go into your Finder. And once you get into your Finder, you can move yourself around to the settings and different applications. Or you have your uh, launch bar across the bottom uh, so that you can get into the settings or some of your favorite applications, your iWork applications, and your iTunes, and, and, and the different things that you use. If you are a Windows 7 user, you're used to seeing the start button in the bottom left-hand corner. If you're a Windows 8 user, you're just used to nothing ever working right. So you've tweaked it a bit so that it's going to work and give you a start button. Uh, you're, e you're either operating on a, your Metro screen, which are all the little icons that, if you don't have a touch screen, are annoying you to death. Um, if you have figured out how to use your desktop and navigate through your desktop, then, then you have those features available. You may have a start button. You might have to go up to the top uh, right-hand corner, then get to your start, and then move to your applications, and it, it can be confusing. So here we go. In a Chromebook, everything is found inside your search button. It's called your launcher box or your launcher tab. What you're going to see there is it's going to pop up right in the middle of your screen. Google, what are you looking for? And you'll notice there's some things across the uh, the bottom of it where it says Google Drive, Snag It, Web Store, and Chrome, and then all apps. If you're accustomed to using a smartphone, then you're accustomed to using applications. Google's operating system, Chrome uh, operating system, uses applications and extensions in their Chrome browser. Again, the Chrome OS is completely web-based. About 80% of what you're going to be able to do on a Chromebook, you will need internet access for. The, the number of things that you don't need internet access for is growing more and more by the day, but there still are a lot of features that you're going to need internet access for. Uh, you're going to notice that here will be the, the most recent applications or extensions that you have used, um, but from there you can also click on all apps. Uh, notice there's only two, but that's the reason, reason for that is because you have the rest of them here across the bottom. You have multiple screens, multiple windows, uh, just like you would on your phone or your tablet where you can move across. You're going to notice here you've got your Chrome web browser, your web store, your help, your Google search, YouTube, Gmail, Google Calendar, Google Maps, Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides. We're going to go through each one of these and explain what they are and what they do and how they function. First thing we're going to do though is we're going to touch on the web store. Inside your Chrome web store, you're going to find your applications and what you're looking for and how to, to make those function. One of the two of the first things that we're going to, to put on the device and and I would suggest you putting on to the device would be Adblock Plus. Now what Adblock Plus will do, and we'll show you how this works, um, and we're going to, to run it as an extension. Um, what Adblock Plus does is when you go to a website, you're going to get ads all over the right and left side, top, bottom. There are ads everywhere on, on web pages now, and they can be annoying, uh, and they can be sometimes inappropriate, and you don't need to see those. So what Adblock Plus does is it will look at the page before it loads, and block out anything that it determines to be an ad. If you think that it should not be blocked, you can right click on it and say unblock this and it will unblock it, but it's not going to just unblock that, it will unblock any ads by that ad provider. So when you're looking at this, you can, you can um, do more than block ads, you can block malware, you can remove social media buttons where you're looking at something like here where we have, hey, tell your friends, no social media buttons they have, turn them off. And then you can also disable tracking so that you get private browsing so that you don't have to worry about coming back later and they're gathering information where you're getting those targeted ads. So you can turn those on, turn those off, that's up to you. 
once it's there, notice that it pops up an icon in the top right corner. These are your different extensions that you have enabled, and there's a difference between an application and an extension. An application runs independently from the Chrome browser, so you have to open up the applications, or an extension runs within the Chrome browser so that it's functioning on every web page. So there's a little bit difference between an application and extension. An extension is part of the web browser, an application operates outside the web browser but still in a web world. The other one that we're going to want to, to use, and this is more for parents, this is called uh, Bloxy. I think I spelled that, uh, spelled it wrong. We're going to search for parental controls. It's called, um, I didn't get it right. It's called Bloxy, B-L-O-C-K-S-I, Bloxy Web Filter. What you're going to do then is you can add this to Chrome. When you tell it to add, notice it's going to say, hey, this is what it can do. It can read and change your data from the website you visit and manage your application extensions and themes. We're going to add it. It's going to check it to make sure it's there and notice that it's ready to go. When I do this, I'm going to click Next. I'm going to tell it whether I'm an adult or a child. Tell it I'm the adult. I'm going to create a username and password. Or I'm going to create my password. Um, verify my password. You're all done. Bloxy is now configured and ready to use. And now I can go into my advanced settings. Of course, as soon as I want to get to advanced settings, it's going to ask me for the password that I just created. I'm going to put it in and I'm going to tell it what my what I want to do and where I want to go. This is a powerful free tool for parents. It's, it's called Bloxy. Uh, where you're going to use this most, you're going to see that it's going to uh, your adult and mature content. It gives you all the different options. If you're in a child, you notice what it does is if you're in a child setting, it's going to block adult content automatically. If you're in an adult setting, it's going to unblock uh, things automatically so that you, you will have opportunities to uh, go through and block out things uh, that you don't want to use. So if, if you're in your child's account and you want children, so then you can go through and tell it, no, I do want this, I do want this, I don't want this. Uh, and then there's also where you don't want to, you don't want to disallow it, but you don't really want to allow it. You want to just be warned in case something happens and you can get a warning that they are accessing material they shouldn't be accessing. So here in the personal, you can block advertising, brokers, tradings. You have just tons and tons and tons of categories. Any unrated sites, this is where a site has not been rated. It hasn't been categorized in one of these. Um, and, and you would be able to block that out if it's never been categorized. Under URL filters, you can go through if, if the well fil filter is not blocking it um, and you need it blocked, you can block it. Or if it is blocking something and you want to whitelist it, you want to make it available to your, your child or to, to the device, then you can uh, allow, put in that specific site and allow and click add. And then you'd have all of those here. Content filtering, if there are specific words that you want filtered out so that those are not accessible, uh, then you would be able to go into content filtering and do specific names where they may be uh, allowed in your web filtering, but there's specific words that you want to, to block out. Access time, this is allowing them to have certain times of the day they may access their device or access the internet. Now, if they're on a Chromebook, uh, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult because uh, the whole thing is web-based but they would be able to access here and then different options that you would have to enable the password. Uh, if you have multiple devices, you can actually set up a, a Bloxy manager so that one account can manage multiple accounts. So, so here, this is, this is a great, 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 great uh, opportunity for parents to take control. What it does is whenever, whenever it is, um, when it's enabled, uh, you will be able to see that, uh, let's see, what's under security risk? Um, if, if you try to access something that should not be accessed, uh, let's go into URL filters, and we're going to, to block out uh, yahoo.com. We're going we're gonna to completely block it. Let's see if this will work. So it's blocked. I'm going to close this window. Oh, 
stay on the page. I forgot to save settings. All right, now we're going to close this window, and let's see if it's going to let me go to yahoo.com. Notice here, as soon as I try to go to uh, yahoo.com, access is denied. It's because I have told it I can't get to this website. Uh, it gives me that it's here. Well, let's say that this is something that I need, something that I want. Uh, then I'm going to go here, and I can actually tell it to allow. Now, as soon as I tell it to allow, you're like, how is that going to stop my child from going through and getting things that they don't need? Once I tell it to allow and tell it to save, all of a sudden I've got to enter that password in again that I've used in the past in order to get access to it. Um, Uh, I have noticed in times that it does take sometimes a few times to allow it. The other thing that you may want to do is to actually close out the window completely, reopen. I can't really close it out at this point. I'd kill the video at this point if we did that. The other thing is if you right click, if you're on a Chromebook, if you use two finger tap, two fingers to tap, it's the same as right clicking. Uh, I can go into the manage extension, not manage extensions. I can go into the options and it's going to ask me to go back in. I can go back in here, go to my URL filtering. If I want to uh, allow it, I'm going to remove this one, I'm going to remove this, save my settings, and all of a sudden now I'm ready to go. And I see where the mistake came in was we did yahoo.com uh, and it was okaying www.yahoo.com. So you do need the variance in there uh, if you're going to use it. But again, this is a free service, free available service. Uh, and you can have it as an extension so that it would be available to you as a parent. In order to uninstall it, you're going to have to, uh, to go through and, and put in passwords and things to uninstall it. So that's where we are for now. We're going to pick up again in just a few minutes on a few more settings.